then you might have to know some more pathways, right? <laughs> Based on those amines and amides that we talked about before. Now, if you've got an alkene and you want to turn it into a halogenoalkane, now look, if you think about that for a second. If you actually bombarded uh, an alkene like ethene with chlorine, you'd get two Cl's there. That would be a dihalogenoalkane, wouldn't it? How could you actually make a monohalogenated compound, right? Like just put on one halogen. Think about it. Okay. And I'm sure that you can come up with an answer like this. Hey, look, if you actually had, say, HCl, not Cl2, but HCl, and you pop the double bond here, one H goes on here, a Cl goes on there, and now you've got one chlorine attached, like a chloroethane, which is what that would be, and that gives you the halogenated hydrocarbon that you want here. So you can do that by an addition reaction of an HCl, right? By the way, if you wanted to go back that way, you just go undergo an elimination reaction, right? Okay, now, if you wanted to go from the halogenoalkane, you wanted to make a nitrile, what are you going to do there? Well, the nitrile is that C triple bonded to an N. So cyanide, in the form of perhaps potassium cyanide, and under a lot of heat, you're going to be able to then react this chemical with this one, and if it's a good leaving group, like an iodine or bromine or a chlorine kind of thing, you pluck that off, you put the, C, uh, the CN on there, and you got yourself your nitrile there. What kind of mechanism is it? Well, that's going to be at the end of the molecule, that leaving group, to put on a triple bonded carbon there uh, to the nitrogen. So that's going to be an SN2 mechanism, uh, because it's going to be a primary location for this. So an SN2 mechanism to get that nitrile. By the way, you could also, with an SN2 mechanism here, attach not a CN, which CN would give you the, uh, a CN would give you the nitrile, but if you uh, uh, um, reacted the halogenoalkane with ammonia, NH3, then you take an H off of one of the, of, well, you take a, off the leaving group here and put an H onto it from the NH3, and you get an NH2 group on there. That's an amine, right? So an abine, amine, through the same SN2 type of mechanism, you'll be able to get an amine from either a nitrile or a halogenoalkane. Once you have an amine, you know, if you react an amine with a carboxylic acid, that's an NH2 group and a COOH group, you take the OH group off, you put the amine on from the other compound, the, a, the, the NH group from the amine, and you're going to get yourself a C double bonded O, NH2, and that's called an amide. So amides can come from amines reacting with carboxylic acids. And you also know that carboxylic acids, when they react with alcohols, when they just react with alcohols, you can form esters from those as well. So that is a further reaction pathway and you have to know all of those steps and again in those mechanisms to be able to come up with certain products in different reactions. So for instance, if somebody said to you, I've got uh, uh, ethene and I want to turn it into an amide, what's the process that I would undergo? And you could say something like, oh, okay, well, if I've got a double bonded molecule here, I could actually undergo an addition reaction with uh, a hydrogen halide compound to form a halogenoalkane, an SN2 reaction to then, or an SN2 reaction to then, uh, with ammonia to be able to produce uh, an amine. It's that kind of thing that you're going to have to be able to describe to, uh, to be able to answer questions about reaction pathways.